Today's show is sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop is located in the St. Louis metro community of Arnold, Missouri. The ABV Barrel Shop is focused on one thing, single barrels. Best of all, you can try before you buy. Head over to abvbarrelshop.com to sign up for their email and text distribution so you know what they have in stock, what classes are coming up, and who from the industry may be coming in to visit. The ABV Barrel Shop, it's where single barrels live. We are also sponsored by The Bar to Go. The Bar to Go offers traveling mini bars that are no bigger than a small purse or toiletry bag. Best of all, they are fully customizable so you can create the perfect piece that is unique for you. If you own your own business, what a fun and unique way to promote what you do. Check them out online at thebartogo.com. That is the number two in the bar to go. If you have wholesale questions, call my friend Isabel Clark at 504-481-1297. Finally, we are sponsored by the Neely Family Distillery. NFD is a family-owned business that keeps ringing up awards in the spirits world. Head to Sparta, Kentucky to experience the family history, award-winning spirits, and meet the Neely family. Check them out online at neelyfamilydistillery.com. Now, on to the show. Let's drink! Welcome to the Bourbon Daily, the podcast about everything bourbon delivered to you every day of the week. Today on the show, we discuss why we don't yet have a Neely Family Distillery TV show. My name is Kathy Cool. Please join me in welcoming my co-host, Steve Akeley, along with our special guests, Darren McCroy and Lori Mangum. Hey, gang. What's up? Hey. Hey. hey oh, so yes, we're going to be talking about the Neelys and why we think that uh, they need to have a TV show. Uh, that would be ideal. Uh, who doesn't want to see that? But we'll get to that after the break. For right now, Kathy said there's something she wanted to talk about. What is that, Kathy? Yes. Okay. You have to appear on one of these following reality challenge shows. Okay. You cannot be eliminated until there are five people left. So you can't just go on and blow it and go home. Okay. okay. Your choices are. All right. American Idol. Okay. The Amazing Race. Okay. Survivor. Mm-hmm. or The Bachelor slash Bachelorette, depending on your preferences. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I think I would uh, enjoy the adventure of The Amazing Race. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'd have to get the right partner because there's some of that stuff I can't do. They have you climbing stuff. or what. Sometimes it's, you know, and then you zip line down. I, I, I'm too old and big to do some of those things, so I just have to make sure I get with the right person. I can drive a stick shift, though. That's helpful in that in that game. It is. Yeah. It's very yeah. helpful. Yeah. Well, very. I can do that. I can do that. So, uh, yes, that's the one I would uh, compete in. Um, yes, uh, that's that's. It. I was hoping you were going to say Big Brother because I'd be in on that one, but uh, oh. you didn't say that. You didn't say that. So uh, out of that group, that's the one I'll pick. How about you, Lori? You know, I would like to say American Idol because I think that would be a blast, but I also tend to freeze up when I have to sing in front of people. So I'm going to stick with The uh, Amazing Race. I'm really good okay. at public transit and, okay. that's, that's uh, also and navigating helpful. new spaces. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. All right. That's good. I think you would be good at that show for sure. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a big skill being able to navigate public transit. You know, that's a lot of it. You know, they have you you know, get your own stuff and all that. So book your own my, tickets. So. My dad and I talked about this at one point because we both loved Amazing Race, and uh, he said, "Okay, I'll do all the snake challenges because I can't stand snakes." So that's his deal. <laughs> okay, snakes is on dad, but water challenges are on me because I'm a good swimmer, and he thinks he's going to drown in three feet of water. So. Okay. That's the that's the skill separation there. Okay. Snakes and water. Who would eat the gross stuff? Because that's where I would also need a good partner. Because I can't eat gross stuff. Ooh, I, well, you know, it depends on how gross, Steve. I've had a lot of uh, fried bugs in Southeast Asia because there's okay. snacks there. Okay. Uh, just like you can't buy Skittles, but you can buy cinnamon crickets. Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right, uh, Darren. What uh, what are those shows would you go on? I. Would definitely probably choose Survivor, okay. but that's because I I know that skill set. Uh, I could not make it on American Idol. I know that for the fact. It is 
been proven genetically. My family is one of the worst singers to ever exist as humans. It's not good. Anyone. Um, nobody in the family. No, no nobody, nobody family. that I know of. Okay. Surely somewhere and somewhere, but no one related to my father. It's all his fault. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> and then um, Bachelor, whichever. I, I don't watch that show. Whichever one makes sense. It would. I would punch somebody. I. I could not deal with that. It would. So. What if you were the bachelor and all the girls were coming after you? Oh, mm-hmm. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. I mean, Maybe that, I'll do that. that, that show. Bad, but... <laughs> Steve is changing his answer, and all yeah. the contestants are Kate Upton. Kate Upton. Yes, it's the, it's the it's the special Kate Upton year. So yes, all contestants are Kate Upton. Wow, that would be fun. And I think Amazing Race would be really really fun. I just think I could do better at Survivor. I think I, I got that one. You got the okay. beard for it, man. You're <laughs> ready. He's got the beard. Okay. I wonder if Darren would be good at that show. Maybe he's he likes to camp. That's a that's a big part yep. of it. Oh, yeah. there you outdoor, go. outdoor. You gotta you gotta know your way around outdoors. Probably knows how to make a fire without matches. Well, probably can do yeah. that. Oh, there you I go. Can do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm. So when I was in Panama, I actually uh, my tour guide's wife was on Survivor. Really? And really. Yeah, I know, right? Um, but she was really interesting in all the stories and like they make it seem a lot harder. Well, at least for her, but she is had grown up in the woods like her whole life in oh, Panama. Wow. And so she knows everything about tropical islands and stuff. And it was evidently as easy as day. And so they like kept throwing her different like challenges behind the scenes just to make sure that she wasn't winning it too easily. Wow. 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 Yeah. Hmm. That's the okay. story they told you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Did you look up any uh like uh videos to verify after the fact? That yes, she was, she was definitely on the show. On the show. Oh, okay. okay. We found oh, the videos. Okay. There was like in their house that we stayed in when we stayed on their island. There was like photos of the whole screw like cask and everything going on there. Right. And this tour guide supposedly gave Bill Gates his tour of Panama when he wow. was down in Panama. So I don't quite know. Top shelf. Yeah, yeah, he was. Yeah, uh, here's an interesting bit of trivia. Bad tipper. He was a bad tipper. You know, he only gave six bucks on, on a full day tour. What, Darren or Bill Gates? <laughs> Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't actually know that. I don't know that. So, but uh, that'd be funny if it was. You know. <laughs> I don't think it's yeah. worth Bill Gates's effort to pull out six dollars. I know that's <laughs> that's the key. That's the funny element of that story because if he didn't tip at all, you could be just like, well, he's uh, he didn't know he was supposed to tip. But if he tips six bucks, then it gets really really weird. Right? You're right. Can you like an assistant or someone with him to handle that. Probably, probably. I would if I had that much money. I'd have an assistant right. to handle the tips and that. I mean, you uh, need a handler as it is, Steve. This is true. <laughs> You're this is true, and I'm not, and I'm not uh, rich, so yes, I, I can't imagine if I was in Bill Gates' situation. So, oh. yeah. Kathy, you asked the question: What of those shows would you be on? I it would be Amazing Race, but I didn't know I had to eat gross stuff. I oh, can yeah. eat gross stuff if it's cooked. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the. It depends on the year. Like they're going to yeah. hand me a tarantula and say, "Eat this." Yeah, maybe possibly. like a worm. Do or well, Could then I want to be on Lori's team. <laughs> You think, you do do it. Eat your bugs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely amazing race. Can one of you two drive a stick shift? Either. One. Sure. Okay. Good. Good. Been like no, the, 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 the funny thing, thing is, sure it comes back. Who 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 goes on that show and then doesn't even bother to learn beforehand? Yeah, that's yeah. true. You've, you've had times when teams didn't know how, and it's like, wow, well, how's mm-hmm. that possible? But don't you love the videos nowadays where they've got like a camera down into a parking lot and people try and steal a car? And it's a stick shift, so they get <laughs> mad and like get out and run away. Yeah, well, I have no idea. Right. Like, what it. is this? Oh no, right. Steve, that's a great rabbit hole. You, you just go watch people trying to steal cars and then they fail. And like oftentimes they'll go out and like kick the tire really hard and then they're limping away because they break their <laughs> foot or uh-huh. they get caught around the corner. It is a oh, great time waste. Or it's oh. or like watching people try and use a rotary phone. Rotary yeah. phone. I don't understand Punching. why that would be hard. Well, the rotary phone. Yeah, yeah I, I don't out. understand. I, I, I think I, I can figure it out. I yeah. haven't actually used one, but I can figure it out. It seems pretty simple to me. I don't know. What, we had one in our sure. basement when I was a kid, and I thought that was the cool phone to go downstairs and use until my mom told me it was not actually <laughs> the cool phone. 
<laughs> my, my mom still has one in her basement. I don't know if it still works. I don't know if it's even plugged in, but it's down there. It's from nice. leftover from when we got our basement fixed up. And uh, my buddy Charlie says he wants that. My dad's always said he could have it because my buddy Charlie was like, can I have that, Larry? My dad would be like, not yet, but I'll, 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 I'm leaving it not for yet. you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to ultimately see Charlie get that phone. I, my mom, she's very, uh, my mom doesn't get part with anything. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yes. So it's not, it's not going anywhere for the moment. Mom won't, mom won't allow it. So yeah. <laughs> my dad was much more, uh, you know, generous guy. So mom's mom always ruled the house though. So it's her rules. So she's going to play by them. All right. Well, guess what? On that note, it is time to drink. What is everyone drinking? Let's start with Steve, Steve. All right. I've got, uh, I've got a barrel bourbon here. Uh, this is a selection for the new Orleans bourbon festival. I was part of this one. Here we go. For pretty quiet. Pretty quiet. Not much going on there. It would take a darn near a miracle for me to win this, but stranger things have happened. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, Kathy, you're next. I want to see. Darren, do you have another full bottle? Uh, I opened it on Thursday. You've tasted this one. Okay. <laughs> I want to see what I can compete with. All right. I'm going to pull out my Wollersheim. Okay. Well, That's been opened. This is the 118.6 proof. Those have great corks. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh. Ridiculous. Oh. Kathy has the lead. All right, uh, Darren, oh. you're next. I've got some Peerless Rye Whiskey. Mm. No, nope. nothing going on there. Or you, your last but not least, Kathy leads this thing. You know, I don't anticipate there being much here. If it were poker, I would fold. No. <laughs> I did put it on a little tighter. No. <laughs> I heard something this time. There was improvement. There was but, evidence uh, of cork popping. Yeah, there was evidence of cork popping. Last time I just heard silence. So uh, <laughs> cheers, gang. Cheers. 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 All right, we'll take a quick break. And then when we come back, it'll be time to talk about the Neely Family Distillery. Do we want to see a TV show? We'll do that after the break. Okay, let's talk about the people that make these shows happen. First up is the Stave and Thief Society. Via their in-person class at Moonshine University in Louisville, Kentucky, the Stave and Thief Society is the place where you, a bourbon enthusiast, can expand your knowledge and emerge an executive bourbon steward. In 2017, I completed my executive bourbon steward certification. It's the most comprehensive bourbon certification available and connects you with an expansive network of bourbon enthusiasts and professionals. Check out the full listing of in-person and online certifications and join the society today by enrolling at staventhief.com. We're also sponsored by the ABV Barrel Shop. The ABV Barrel Shop focuses exclusively on barrel picks. It's the job of owners Steve Akeley and Jim Fosnott to seek out distilleries that are making the best whiskey in the world, taste through their barrels, and select the ones that are off-profile in the best way possible. They have high standards and refuse to allow anything into their store other than something they would be proud to have their name on. This leads to some really awkward conversations with distilleries that can't make it, but they do it for you, their customers. Learn more about what is going on at their St. Louis-based store by heading over to abvbarrelshop.com. Last but not least, we are sponsored by Neely Family Distillery. Royce Neely is the 11th generation distiller in one of America's oldest distilling families. A visit to Neely Family Distillery takes you through family history where you can see all the artifacts and newspaper clippings through the years from this family that started distilling in America after James Neely arrived from Northern Ireland in 1740. Today, Royce Neely and his team are crafting some of the best spirits in America. Their bourbon and absinthe offerings keep winning top honors in the spirits competitions. Recently, their absinthe made history as the first platinum winner in the absinthe category at the San Francisco Spirits Competition. Neely Family Distillery is definitely a bucket list destination if you are a bourbon fan. Learn more about their spirit offerings, visiting their facility, and the awards they have collected over at NeelyFamilyDistillery.com. McDill, what did you say you wanted? A Jaguar tequila. 
Why? It's, it's so because it's pretty. It's like a. It, I don't think it's a decanter, but it's a bottle. It is fucking three feet long. It's in the display case. You have to ask for them to unlock for you. It's three hundred dollars, and I'm like, it's so pretty. It looks like a whole big ass cat. It's probably shitty tequila inside of it, but it's a tequila Jaguar, and I fucking want it. I want it so bad. <laughs> and you're listening to the work. Bourbon Daily. <laughs> Welcome back to the Bourbon Daily. Today we are discussing the sad state of things because the Neelys haven't turned their lives into a reality TV show yet. Yeah, they got to do this, right? I mean, is there a business anywhere that would be more interesting than what's going on at Neely Family Distillery to see that in action? Oh, I, no. mean, I mean, I can't think of one personally. I just... No. How has this not happened yet? Who do we need to call to start right. some kind of a petition to get this going? Get this thing going, yes. Yeah. I I, I feel like it needs to happen. I mean, you think about uh, Royce as a character, Becca as a character, his parents are characters. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Papa is the, yeah, he's a character. You've got all of his uncles and stuff like that. I mean, these are, every single one of them could have a spinoff series. They're so good. But to put them all on one show? It, it's maybe it's too much. Maybe maybe the people have been interested to be like, there's just too much here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> too much content. Yeah, too much content. Too uh, yeah. Well, so I don't know. I'm gonna Very play devil's there. advocate here. Okay. So oh. all right. just because someone's got to, I think from my little interactions with Royce, I think he might get a little pissed off if people were following him around everywhere. <laughs> yeah. oh, he was That's good. Him. Good for the show. Left and right. It's good for the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I, just, I think that would go, be good. And then you think about all the other cool people that are coming in there. I mean, Lori Mangan could show up one day. Or Steve Akeley could show up. Any Kathy person. Cool, <laughs> Darren McCroy. I mean, there's all these other characters <laughs> that could possibly show up, like the Robinsons, like the world's nicest people. Oh my they gosh. show up one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that all that stuff would be fun too to see who's mm -hmm. coming in. And then, you know, uh, uh, Lori uh, Turner Wathen, our mutual friend. Oh, How great Turner. would he be on an episode? He would be super fun up there. They would yeah. do a spin off if he walked in. Yeah, That's yeah, he, he'd end up getting his own show for sure. He yeah. is a character in and of himself. Yeah, his yeah. would be after dark though, because they would have to leave it all, all the cussing. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, that's true. That's not suitable for families. He definitely <laughs> drops a lot of f bombs. And he, yeah, that's yeah. just who he is. I think sure. the Neely show would be better if it was after dark too. Like, I know that they are really good about not cussing at the distillery, but I think if it was just full, whatever came to their mind came out. I think I would not leave my tv uh -huh. i don't know that i've ever heard of robin oh the neelys i'm sorry i was thinking the of robinsons what about the i don't think they've ever cussed who the robinsons mm -hmm. i don't think so either probably I not i don't think the robinsons cuss mm -hmm. um now um it's amazing how they don't mind being around all these degenerates of uh, like people like <laughs> no. us. They they're, they're such nice people i don't ever understand that <laughs> uh yes uh yeah uh, so that would be the interesting thing too because yeah you're right darren they don't cuss no one will hear the the neely's cussing at the distillery because um in particular and i don't think his dad likes it either but for sure his mom doesn't like oh that michelle would not be here for that michelle no. does not allow that mm -mm, so mm -mm. so uh yes that would be interesting she'd probably laid on the rules no cussing on the show <laughs> and uh, yeah the, the producer would be like i just gotta be yourselves come on let loose yeah, yeah be free Right. Yeah. So something but beeps. Yeah. Yeah. There'd be a lot of beeping in the after hours when they like go home right. and you know, Becca's yelling at Royce to put clothes on yeah. before he walks oh, yeah. in front of an open window. Right, right. all that house. kind of stuff. Like, yeah. There's also yeah. that problem. Like Royce oftentimes beeps. walks in front of cameras, Naked. right? When you're recording <laughs> Steve. Exactly. Yes. We had an oh. event one time where he strolled by. Molly Wellman was talking at the time. There goes Royce. He was wearing his underwear. I'll give him credit. He was wearing underwear. Uh, and he just goes stroll by. But he was as confident. I mean, it was the confident walk. Just walks all by. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> uh, he claims he had no idea. I, I, I would guess he didn't. He Because he, he was telling me, you got to, you know, don't publish that show. I always would put him out on the internet afterwards. <laughs> Uh, and he was like, you can't put that one out there. So you know, him strolling by in his underwear. So, they probably uh, have an episode while Becca was hosting. It could, yeah, yeah. It could focus on uh, the shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. 
that would be interesting for the show too because you would get to see that difference as viewers because mm -hmm. what confuses a lot of our people they uh you know people that listen to the the podcast the bourbon daily they assume becca's going to be like that then they go up to the uh, neely family distillery and they meet becca for the first time and she's quiet and fun and nice and but not yelling at you not cussing you out, not screaming at everybody, uh, you know, uh, all the people that work there and stuff. She's not like that. But uh, people uh, who don't know think that's how she is. But she's not like that just in real life. Uh, on the show, definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So that would be fun too to show that side mm -hmm. of her for sure. And then like on the road when they go to Bourbon Festival, oh, yeah. and Key oh, West yeah. with yeah. ABV and yeah. those, on would the be road. Super yeah. Fun. yeah. Yeah. Those would be great shows for sure. So yeah, that would be fun stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I do see Royce having like no patience for any of this though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If if anyone was gonna be like, I can't handle it, it probably would be Royce. Either that yeah. or his dad. Yeah. Yeah, what will get interesting about these things, you know, I, I don't think you get paid very much when you start out. I think it's very low. I mean, you know, you're, you're making, you know, like $10,000 an episode or something like that because they know everybody wants to be on TV. So so they get you, right. they like it. And then when it's like time for renewal, then if, if you're popular enough to, you know, sign that second agreement with them, then it gets to be some really big money. I mean, some of those uh, you know, reality stars are, you know, making $25 million a show. Big, it's big crazy. money because it's crazy because they know that they'll be able to sell syndication rights and all that stuff. So they, they really yeah. move up. So if they got to that point, uh, you know, Royce would have to deal with all that stuff because right. <laughs> then you're talking real money. You know, yelling at someone and you're threatening to kick them out of your distillery when you're making ten grand an episode is very different than you're making, you know, $25 million a year. Uh-huh. You know? So, so yeah. I have a question. We talked about the special guests that would appear there. Yes. Who would be the fan favorite special guest that you could see walking through there and then they make them a returnable character and then okay. something happens and they move in down the street and nowhere Sparta. There, there's, there's several different angles here. I, I mean, I feel like uh, Bronner would be a fun character to come mm -hmm. in. He comes in people would like Bronner because he's, yeah. he's a funny guy. He's a character. Um, uh, very high with the female demographic would be Andrew Weebrink. You know, he still go, he comes in there and he's got some experiments going on in Neely's warehouse. So they could have him checking mm -hmm. on those and stuff like that from Independence Dave. Uh, he's, he's very popular with the female demographic. Um, so that could be a popular one. Um, who else? A uh, Molly Wellman. Molly Wellman would be one that would be, she, hey, she was just there the other day. She was just there, what, on Friday? Mm -hmm. So yep. she, she pops it all the time. She doesn't live far from there. So she would be, uh, maybe the that'd be popular. a big one. Yeah. She might be the most popular one. I would think of, out of all, of she's third popular in all the state. Yes. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So you've got, uh, I think Steve back. would have a good job being a returning character too. Like people, mm -hmm. I hope so, but they would have to refer to you as like the Colonel. Yeah. The Colonel. Yeah. I'd just be the Colonel. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you what, it, we would have had some good times filming some of the stuff Royce and I used to do back in the day. I don't know that we get to do as much fun stuff like we used to, but man, we had some fun times. Oh, man. <laughs> days when we just live at the distillery maybe we'd have to go back to that they, they'd be like all right we're, we're gonna put you back where you two live you know royce is living at the distillery steve's visiting and staying at the distillery <laughs> watch the shenanigans that, that happened then so yeah the time his grandfather was shopping you know, all that kind of stuff would be mm -hmm. good yeah yeah hopefully hopefully that, that would be fun it's gotta happen someone's gotta someone's gotta do that i know that uh there was uh there was a production company interested for a while in uh, having them on and uh they made the sizzle reel and everything i don't know if uh royce and becca will ever share that but uh they have a sizzle reel that was used to uh generate some interest but uh anybody who who saw that and then didn't pick that up is crazy because that that's the that's the real thing what you saw there is not them acting and trying to get a tv show it's just them so yep. yeah yeah, fun stuff. So hopefully uh, one day it comes through. It, it comes through. So start a channel, it. Steve. Yes, I'd love to do that. That would be like my that dream. Would be fun. Run, a, run a run a TV network type of thing. Would be cool. I think I could come up with the content. I just don't mm -hmm. know how that happens. So <laughs> all right, uh, we'll wrap this one up as we always do by talking about where people can find us. Darren, we'll start with you. Where can people find you? You can find me waiting on pins and needles for this show to drop at the Bourbon Adventures. All right, Lori. Y'all can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Spirited Curves. All right, Kathy. I'm on Instagram at KK Cast Strength. 
For me, I'm an easy guy to find. I'm at Steve Akeley on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I've got a website, steveakeley.com. We've also got that company website. That thing's abvnetwork.com. That's the one you got to check out. Everything that we do is out there. We put all of our previous shows. We've got Bourbon Zeppelin out there. We've got Quick Bourbon Notes, our most popular publication. All that's available and much more at abvnetwork.com. Come by and see us. The place where you can try before you buy is the ABV Barrel Shop. You can sign up for our email and text distribution so you know what's going on over at abvbarrelshop.com. Kathy, anything else to say before we get out? here yeah i just want to remind the audience to please give us a five-star review that includes comments it helps people find the show which is very important to us if you like what we're doing we ask that you please visit our patreon page patreon.com slash the abv network great job today gang finance we'll have a brand new show for you tomorrow looking forward to that until then take care everybody see ya later bye y'all peace Before we finish the show, let's talk about some of the great companies that support the ABV network. First up is Moonshine Still Pro. Moonshine Still Pro is owned and operated by Russell Creed, who makes stills for the hobby distiller. He offers a one-stop shop for everything the at-home distiller needs. Whether it's a small, experimental stovetop still or something bigger you run outside, he has the still or parts you would have difficulty fabricating yourself if you were trying to build a DIY still project. Additionally, he has resources to assist in creating unique distilled spirits, including heirloom grains, barrels for aging, and recipes. Check out Russell's company online at moonshinestillpro.com. Finally, I have a question for you. Have you ever boxed a bear? Of course not. That'd be silly. Bears really don't follow the rules, so shots in the back of the head, punches to the nuts, and scrums after the bell would be the norm. A better idea would be to enjoy Boxing Bear Whiskey, a brand crafted by Nobleton's Distilling House in Union, Missouri, and sold exclusively at the ABV Barrel Shop in suburban St. Louis. This is a popular offering that sells out quickly, but when you're in town, stop by the ABV Barrel Shop and see if they have it in stock. Better yet, sign up for their email and text distribution over at abvbarrelshop.com and you'll know exactly when it is in stock. This is Steve Akeley, owner of the ABV Network, signing off. We thank you for listening to our programming and truly appreciate your support. The Bourbon Daily is part of the ABV Network. For more information or to become a sponsor, please visit abvnetwork.com. Thanks for listening and cheers. This has been a Steve Akeley production. Thank <laughs> you.